Okay, welcome back. I hope you watched those videos. Um, I, again, I, I, I don't want, I don't like to embed the example videos in the lectures themselves because then I think it's harder for you to go back and watch the examples. I, I know that that's often uh, helpful when you're doing the homework. So I want to keep them separate, but I really encourage you to jump out, watch the video, jump back in, uh, and, and, and continue watching the lecture. Okay. And, and again, work the examples on a sheet of paper alongside me, uh, particularly in the example videos where I ask you to try to do the problems without looking at the solutions. That really, really, really is the only way to be successful in this class. Okay, so now that you've looked at the examples and we've talked a little bit about compounding, I wanna talk a little bit more in detail about what compounding is, okay? So compounding is the effect of earning interest on interest. In other words, it's the way that we move, uh, uh, that we, uh, we move from having a very small amount in a short period of time to a very large amount over a long period of time. Because the money that we make in the interim, all the interest that we earn in the interim, continues to earn interest on itself. And so by the time you get 100 years in the future on your investment account, the interest that you've earned in year one has grown to a huge amount and is still earning interest in year 99. And that's on top of the amount that you start with, which is called the principal. Okay. Now this is distinct. Compounding is a distinct effect and it's different from, what, how, from how these transactions originally worked. Now way back in the day, before we had really come up with the math and the idea of compound interest uh, or compounding rates, uh, we started with, finance started with just simple interest uh, loans. Right? So simple interest means that you only earn interest on the principal amount. And that means that whatever you start with, say you borrowed $100, you're only paying back interest on that $100. So if your rate is 10%, you're paying 10% interest on $100. And if you're going to pay that for 10 years, then you just pay $10 per year. It does not start to compound against you like the, the example that we're going to look at right now, right? This credit card example. Because currently, simple interest is not uh, that common anymore, right? So uh, it used to be the most common thing. Uh, it, it, simple interest, uh, it, mostly because it was really easy to calculate, you did not have to work with that, all the, the decimals and fractions that we do now. And remember, before finance was, was invented long before the invention of a calculator. So if you could keep the math simple, everybody was happy. So simple interest just means that you only ever pay the same amount of interest every year, and it's always on the principal, the amount that you originally borrowed or invested. Again, that's not super common anymore. In fact, I haven't seen a contract like that uh, in a long, long time. So I'd be surprised if, if there were many simple interest contracts out there anymore. What happens now is what's compound interest, and that's the problems that we just looked at, where the interest is earned on interest, on interest, on interest, and so on and so forth. Now, compound interest is one of the most powerful tools in finance. In fact, it's the most powerful money maker that we know of, right? And when we get into the investment section of the class, which is a few chapters ahead of us, but we're gonna look at the power of compound interest over a huge amount of time and how that can be the way that Hopefully, it's basically going to be the way that we all retire one day because you start small and you start now and you just continue to put money into your retirement account or your savings account and you do it every month, whatever you can for as long as you can. And it's not going to look like much in the fir for the first year or the first five years or the first 10 years, but hopefully in 40 years when you're ready to retire or 50 years when you're ready to retire, the amount has snowballed into something that's substantial enough that you can live off it for the next 20 or 30 years. Right? Compound interest is enormously powerful when it's working for you. Right? So when you are earning compound interest, you're doing great. When you are paying compound interest, of course, it's working against you. And that's why you wanna be really careful about the interest rates that you pay on loans, like student loans, house loans. The higher that interest rate, the more you're being charged because you're being charged on the interest that you've already been charged on previously, right? If you get a $20,000 student loan, but you wait 10 years to pay it off, that student loan is accruing interest over those 10 year, over that 10 year period. And, uh, and you are paying when you start to pay it off. The, the interest that you earned in that 10 year period will also be earning interest and you will also be paying that back, right? 
So when it's working against you, it's a just as powerful a tool, and it's something that you've got to uh, actively uh, think about and, and work against. Okay, so now we're gonna work a, another example. Again, here's the card, just jump to this other video. It's a credit card example, sort of demonstrating a compound interest and, and, uh, and, and how it works. Okay, so please, again, hopefully you took a look at this problem, uh, then we'll come back. Uh, from here on out though, we are, uh, with the exception of working again, we'll, when we talk about present value, we'll, we'll, we'll again go back to the, um, to the formula just, just to, so that you get a good look at it. Uh, again, I think it's really important uh, to always work a problem looking at the formula first. Uh, that way you have a good idea of what's going on. But practically speaking, we're all going to be using this calculator for the most part, uh, particularly as the problems get more advanced and more complicated. Using the formula just becomes impossible. Okay. So this is the formula I'm going to teach you in this class. This is the formula, the, I mean, this is the calculator I'm going to teach in this class. It's the calculator that you are going to use um, in the, uh, 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 that I'm going to show in all the example problems. So uh, again, you can use any calculator you want, um, I, I, uh, but this is the one that I'm going to demonstrate for you. Uh, so. For now, we're gonna ignore the payment key, but we're gonna be using, and now you'll hopefully recognize the time value of money keys. Uh, it's this gray row here that says FV, PV, PMT, N, and IY. Those represent the, the, the inputs to the time value of money problem. Again, ignore the payment key. That's gonna be next chapter when we, we make the formula a little more complicated and we incorporate this, uh, this payment into the time value of money. But for now, we're looking at FV, which is the future value, PV, which is the present value, N, which is the number of periods, and I, Y, which is the I in the formula. It's the rate of return. Okay, so here again is, this is the example, uh, and, and, and we did it in the example videos, but this is the problem that we worked first. Uh, if we use the, the calculator to solve for future value, uh, then we see that we get the same answer. Uh, and in the videos, I, I talk about always remembering to clear the time value of money, uh, and, and I hopefully reinforce all that. So again, please watch the example videos uh, as you go along in this lecture. It's going to be particularly helpful here.